my resident day research project is on the surgical outcome of macular pucker peel in patient with good preoperative vision. As we know, macular pucker is a common disorder of the vitreal retinal interface. It is seen in approximately 10 to 30% of patients over the age of 50. In patients with significant macular pucker, they typically present with symptoms of metamorphopsia, micropsia, and in some cases, the general complaint of blurry vision. Risk factors for the development of macular pucker include age, trauma, ocular inflammation, and previous ocular surgery. The current standard of treatment is a parse plan of vitrectomy with epiretinal membrane peeling. Surgical risks include 1% of patients would develop retinal detachment and 1% of patients would develop macular hull. The image to your left is an image of a OCT macula of the left eye in a 70-year-old woman with an epiretinal membrane in her left eye associated with distortion of her foveal depression and also with macular thickening. The image to your right is the post-operative OCT macula of the same eye two months later where you can see there is restoration of the foveal contour as well as improvement of the macular thickening. Ultimately, the decision regarding surgery require careful consideration of which patient to operate on and when to operate, particularly in patient with good preoperative vision. The purpose of this study is therefore to evaluate whether patient with macular pucker and good preoperative visual acuity benefit from small gauge pars plantar vitrectomy with epiretinal membrane peeling. This is a retrospective chart review of patients seen in a tertiary referral-based retina practice here in Al Birmingham, Alabama. It includes 80 eyes of 77 patients who have undergone small gauge pars plantar vitrectomy and EMP peel with or without cataract extraction. Patients who were excluded from this study include those with macular or corneal disease that limit visual potential and those who have preoperative visual acuity of 2050 vision or worse. So between the year 2014 to early 2017, 408 eyes underwent macular pucker peel. 328 of those eyes were excluded for having preoperative visual acuity of 2050 or worse. 80 eyes were included in the study. Half of those eyes were pseudophagic and the other half were phagic. The pseudophagic eyes underwent a pars plantar vitrectomy with an EMP peel. In the phagic group, half their eye went underwent pars plantar vitrectomy with an EMP peel, and the other half underwent cataract extraction at the time of the vitrectomy with the EMP peel. So a quick review of the baseline characteristic of the patients included in this study. We had a total of 77 patients, half of which were women, and the other half were men. The mean age was 68 years old with a range between 38 and 84 years of age. Again, the eyes included were 80, half of which were right, and approximately half were left. 68 out of those 80 eyes had idiopathic EMP, and 12 out of those 80 eyes had non-idiopathic EMP found to be associated with non proliferative diabetic retinopathy, retinal breaks, or ocular inflammation. The average length of follow-up post-op was 15 weeks. So in our first group, the pseudophagic group that underwent the vitrectomy with the EMP peel, 80% of those eyes had better vision or maintained vision of 20, of 2040 or better. 20% of the eyes had 2050 vision or worse post-op. One in eight of those eyes had macular edema, one had retinal detachment, and one had corneal decompensation requiring a DSEC post-op. In our fake group that only that underwent cataract extraction at the time of the vitrectomy with the EMP peel, we saw that 85% of those eyes had 2040 vision or better, and 15% had 2050 vision or worse post-op. Again, the one in three patient that had 2050 vision or worse post-op had macular edema, and one developed a macular hull. In the fake group that only underwent the vitrectomy with the EMP peel, we saw that only 35% of those eyes actually had 2040 vision or better postoperatively. The majority of the eyes, 65% to be exact, had 2050 vision or worse. And the reason we found is that in at least half of these patients, they had had progression of their cataracts 
post-vitrectomy accounting for their poor visual outcome. One in the 13 patients had choroidal neovascularization. So in conclusion, in patients with good preoperative visual acuity of 2040 or better, it is appropriate to operate if patient has quality of life problems. We found that the majority of patients who underwent the macular puck appeal obtained 2040 vision or better postoperatively. In phacic patient, it is recommended that patient undergo cataract extraction at the time of the macular puck appeal, as cataract progression post vitrectomy is a limiting factor in postoperative visual recovery based on our study.